Hello everyone, we're back again with another critique video today on the channel. We have, well, Rhonda Patrick, actually, from Found My Fitness Clips. So this is a YouTube short, and the title of it is No One Would Follow a Carnivore Diet If They Knew This. When in reality, actually, if they did know this and have heard it, they would know that it's complete bunk, and they would still continue carnivore if they're a sensible person. I've actually seen this clip before. Do I remember what it is? No. But I do remember that I commented below in the comment section, and I said, unfortunately, Rhonda, you will be featuring publicly this time on my channel due to this. Womp womp. Anyway, do I know what this is? No, but I do know that Lane Norton features in this clip. So really, am I critiquing Rhonda Patrick? No, I'm not critiquing Rhonda Patrick per se. I'm critiquing the clip of Lane Norton she put up that she is clearly agreeing with. So that, that's the that's the problem here. So we're just gonna jump directly into this and see what, well, they both have to say. Of course, just like always, before we get started, please subscribe to the Patreon if you haven't already to gain access to one week early uploads, ad free content, uncensored content, and one extra video per week. And also, if you haven't bought my book, Contraindicated, I'd recommend doing that as well, link in the description below. So now let's get directly into this video. Like I said, Carn Carnivores. What? You can't accuse Dr. Lane Norton of being against meat. Well, we haven't. We say that he's against logic and reason, because he is. And he's pro-ideology, but what he wants to do is he wants to feign this humility by saying that he isn't, and saying that everyone else that doesn't agree with him is actually an ideologue and is tribal, and, you know, basically, if you if you think that you should be excluding certain things that you can put in your mouth, chew and swallow, then you're dogmatic. Here's what he had to say. People might do a carnivore diet. Why do we care what he has to say? Lose 30, 40 pounds. Well, losing weight is not the goal of the diet per se, especially considering the fact that you said pounds, which is a unit of weight, a unit of mass, which doesn't discriminate based on what that weight is made up of, because the goal is really to lose fat and water that is contraindicated. Okay. Their blood glucose regulation gets better. Wow, this seems like a really scary diet to be on, doesn't it? Their HDL gets better. Well, what do you mean by better? What you mean is to improve it, and that's stupid, because HDL is not a marker, therefore is not representative of heart disease risk or, or even prevalence of heart disease development in the body. None of the lipoproteins or cholesterol itself are causal in heart disease. Only one of the lipoproteins can be contributory to a very slight degree, very slight, to the point where it's negligible and you shouldn't even consider it in the first place. We're talking about LDL, of course, and without the actual cause of heart disease, disease being present, LDL is actually not a problem whatsoever, even if it does become oxidized or glycated, by the way. But their, their LDL goes through the roof. Who cares? LDL is a lipoprotein that is encoded for, in terms of its production, by the genes in our body, those genes having evolved for billions of f***ing years, Lane. So you think that the body is just synthesizing a protein according to its genes to kill us? No, of course you don't. What you would say in response is, that's silly, Eddie. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that even if your body produces it, there is a point where it can produce too much of it given certain stimuli, your diet, for example, to which I say, well, why do you say that? The reason you say that is because you believe that LDL is causal in heart disease based on associative f***ing data because you can't interpret data yourself. Being a scientist, it's great, isn't it? We see this in the carnivore community. There's people like bragging about having LDL levels of... Th well, you shouldn't brag about it, but you also shouldn't be afraid of it. You should say, well, I'm indifferent to it. Treat it with apathy, insouciance. It doesn't matter because your LDL levels are dictated by your... Dictated by your genes and nothing else, okay? LDL does not cause heart disease. If it did, and if cholesterol itself caused heart disease and all this other stuff that he believes and, and promulgates like an inane idiot and an offensive moron, well, then what you'd see is plaque accumulating in the veins as well as the arteries. The only time that you'll see atherosclerosis developing in veins is if you introduce the veins into a high-pressure area of the vascular system via a bypass situation, which should tell you something. And not only that, it doesn't only occur in the arterial side. I mean, it does only occur, but it doesn't simply only occur in the arterial side of the vasculature. It occurs in set sites in that vasculature that are 100% predictable all the time, invariably, without any variation whatsoever. And those are the areas of the vascular system that exhibit the most turbulent blood flow. The turbulent blood flow being exacerbated by hypertension lane. Chronic hypertension is the cause of heart disease. There's another cause behind the chronic hypertension because no one's just going to exhibit chronic hypertension. There's another cause, and that is ostensibly, ostensibly, see, that's responsible language there. It's responsible scientific language, chronic and systemic inflammation. Heart disease takes decades to develop. Any manifestation of cardiovascular the disease, strokes and heart attacks. Heart attacks, by the way, for the viewer, being different from cardiac arrest. Just wanted to clarify. Three, four, five hundred milligrams per deciliter. In it. So what? Don't care. It's like 
this is going to get people killed. No, that's your opinion, and it's a fallacious one at that, based on erroneousness, basically. Erroneousnessnessness. Okay. These Mendelian randomization studies. I mean, well, okay, the Mendelian randomization studies that you're referring to never, ever, ever controlled for confounding variables. It's epidemiological, and also they never once measured these people's LDL levels, and also the genes that they selected for are associated with increased circulating levels of LDL. Even if you could causally say, well, they're absolutely, you know, they, they are responsible for producing LDL, and I'm not, I'm not saying they aren't, but you could causally say that irrespective of any stimuli, they would result in an elevated increase in LDL. Well, you never measured it, and you didn't even calculate it throughout the entire study. You didn't control for any confounding variables, and was it properly randomized? I didn't even look at that much at all. Lane, the studies don't show d they don't show anything. This is your ideology talking. They came out, you look at the lifetime exposure to L, you can draw a straight line through it. I mean, you can- Who cares? Was it also adjusted for? So fabricated because scientists report what they observed, not what they think they would have observed if they had done the study differently in an ideal world where they could have exerted complete control over their subjects? Subjects. They're not even subjects, they're, they're participants. Literally draw a straight line through- Oh, can you literally draw a straight line through it? Great, cool. So there's nothing else at, at play here, nothing. Amount of LDL- I mean, here's the thing, here's the thing. And I really want to get this through people's heads. I don't care how strong an association is. You cannot establish causality with an association, no matter how strong the association is. The association between smoking and lung cancer in populations that smoke and the presentation within those populations of lung cancer epidemiologically is a relative increase of 11,500% roughly. That's tough to ignore. That doesn't prove that smoking causes heart disease. And you can say that silly all you want. You know what you're doing? when you say that silly, you are showing your absolute destitution of scientific discipline. I don't give a f if it's 3,000 million percent. You cannot establish causality with an association, no matter how strong. So even if all of these problems that I've been asking if they are problems were not problems and everything was controlled, that was associative, wasn't it? For example, the studies that try and claim that LDL is causal in heart disease because if you look at these randomized controlled trials, if you lower these people's LDL, their heart disease gets better and this and that and all these outcomes become better. Well, what is the intervention used primarily to lower the LDL. Are they statins that are serendipitously initially anti-inflammatory? Inflammation being the underpinning etiology of heart disease? Well, there you f***ing go. That's why you can't establish causality with them because the intervention had a confounder, that being the fact that the literal intervention itself was anti-inflammatory. Give me a damn break. Exposure throughout the course of someone's life and the risk for heart disease. Not risk, because risk is a cause and effect claim. Look up the new Oxford English Dictionary definitions, all six of them for the word risk. They are all causal words. They are all causal definitions. So false. That is a cause and effect claim, and there are no studies to inform upon the risk of any heart health outcome or disease process as it relates to any aspect of human nutrition over any given period of time throughout the entire time human nutrition science has existed. There never has been, and there never will be, because in order to do that, you need to take two genetically identical twins, both phenotypically and genotypically identical, separate them at birth, put them into two metabolic ward locking rooms, observe them over their entire lives of attempting to infer lifelong health outcomes, 40 years for 40 year long health outcomes, etc., and control for every single variable, including the time they wake up, the time they go to bed, their stress levels, their hormone levels, etc., etc., etc. It's implausible for obvious reasons, it's exorbitantly expensive, and it wouldn't get past an ethics committee, rightfully so. And, and they go, but I'm so much healthier now. Ostensibly, health is the absence of disease process, and if they had an amelioration that was highly associated with the adoption of their new diet, of their disease processes, well, then why do you have a problem with that? I mean, this is a man who called people that simply stated their experience not eating fiber with the amelioration of many bowel dysfunctions, idiots, quote unquote. So when I hear these idiots talk about how, well, I ate fiber and I felt worse, you were bloated, big <laughs> deal. <laughs> Completely insensible, callous f***ing moron. A d***wad in the extreme. One, you don't feel heart disease until it's knocking on your door. Correct, but we covered that, didn't we? And two, you may, on balance, overall, yes, be healthier than you were before, but you are not as healthy as if you'd gotten all those benefits and also not raised your LDL. That's your opinion, and you're speaking with such conviction about it as if it's not an opinion, and as if it's fact, which is typical of a human being. Human beings being basically beings that don't like chaos at all, and therefore like to establish order in areas where it shouldn't be established, so irrespective of whether it's responsible to do such a thing, which is exactly what Lane and all f***ing scientists have the proclivity to do. Being an actual disciplined scientist is one of the most humble things that you can do, because you have to put aside those f***ing 
beliefs and you have to not speak with conviction about basically anything because, well, 99.9999999999% of the time you cannot establish causal relationships in any sphere of science, especially inferential statistics. That's 100% of the time. Standard inferential statistics does not allow you to assert cause and effect in anything. Without additional machinery, i.e. causal inference, you cannot do it. Standard inferential statistics makes no claim about causality, but you do and you shouldn't. You are evincing your destitution of scientific discipline and you do it in every single video. I mean, Lane, how much of LDL, foam cells, cholesterol, all of that stuff combined actually constitutes atherosclerotic plaque in people that are genetically normal? It's one plus or minus one percent. So on average, less than 1%, but maximally 2%. It's largely composed of scar tissue that could become calcified at later stages, then become unstable in rupture, and then cause thrombi, which are blood clots. That's what they're made up of. Scar tissue is largely composed of collagen and, well, is formed due to abrasions. Hint, hint, lane. Okay, not cholesterol. The foundation of this entire myth originated in the 1950s from Ansel Keys, and a little before that, actually. It was directly related to Nikolai N. Anichkov, actually, from Russia who force-fed rabbits pure cholesterol and found that they developed heart disease. That's actually where it originated from. So, and the Angel Key shit was just a bunch of fraud. And it's absolutely, as it was established in 2015, unequivocally, it's unambiguous at this point. But anyway, so that was a little quick video there. I tried to make it a little longer with my talking. Yes, uh, cholesterol doesn't cause heart disease. That's silly. That's stupid. We know that it doesn't cause heart disease. None of the lipoproteins cause heart disease. There's no good or bad cholesterol. HDL and LDL aren't cholesterol. They're lipoproteins anyway. There's no good or bad lipoproteins. They're all good, actually, in the fact that they are indicated to have been produced by the body given the responses of the genes to certain stimuli, those genes having evolved for billions of years, and those genes being able to adapt to the environment in which you place them. That's another point that I didn't actually say. Genes are not a fait accompli, okay? You have influence over them. You don't have complete influence over them or else you could basically doing the same things as someone else become that person. But you are your own person because your genes are different, but they're 99.99% identical and we do have influence over them. So even if LDL were causal and heart disease, it doesn't mean that if you have certain genes, you will necessarily have high LDL. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, please subscribe to the channel and please leave your thoughts in the comment section below. And also once again, subscribe to the Patreon if you haven't already and buy my book Contraindicated, a closer look and revision of mainstream health axioms that have perpetuated illness, disorder, and disease for over a century if you have not bought that book already. And most importantly, link on the bottom of the screen. What is that link? Well, that is a link that will bring you to an amazing site with amazing products from an amazing brand known as Cerule. If you purchase product through that link, you will get a permanent 10% and permanent free shipping discount when signing up for monthly deliveries. But of course, don't buy those products if you don't know what they are. So I would immediately, as soon as possible, refer to the link in the top right corner of the screen, the Cerule products link, which is a complete video elucidation and explanation of what those products are, who should take them, why you should take them, when to take them, etc., etc. And I'll also further migrate to the description below to find a video between myself and Professor Barquet on these products in further detail, as well as the company of Cerule itself. However, I don't want you buying those products. So if you're curious about how to earn those products for free, like I do, please email me at edgookie14 at gmail.com behind the scenes, because who in their right mind wouldn't want that? If you are not someone who would like to contribute monthly recurring payments to me to support me, but you'd like to contribute a single donation or a one-time donation, I do have the ability for that. I've opened up, I've introduced the option option in the description below via a GoFundMe link. So once again, you can find that in the description below. And with that being said, once again, join me next time when we react to someone else who is not as arrogant, offensive, and scientifically undisciplined as Lane Norton here is. So till then.